Good evening, Birchwood Baptist family. I hope everyone is well tonight. Um, we're going to talk about Isaac being a type of Christ. So if you want to turn to these two places in your Bibles, we're going to look at Hebrews 11, just a few verses there, and Genesis 22. And so Genesis 22, Hebrews 11, and um, we'll, we'll be in both of those places tonight. Uh, before we go to our time of devotion, though, remember in prayer, if you would, Don Knotts. Uh, he smashed the end of his finger off yesterday, and uh, he's in some pain today. But um, just uh, pray for him and uh, Brenda um, as she cares for him. Just uh, pray that the Lord would be with him, that the soreness would be limited. Uh, and so we just uh, want to lift them up, as well as Miss Carolyn and Dee. We want to pray for Miss um, Naomi Smith and Ginger. Um, we'll pray for all those that are struggling with, with health issues, Sandy and Al, uh, and I'm sure there's others that I'm just escaping my memory right now, but pray for all these, uh, that the Lord would sustain them and, and bring healing to their bodies. Um, I miss you. I wish, I wish we could get, I'll get together, uh, even this Sunday. Uh, but for those of you who still don't feel comfortable coming, we're continuing to pray for you. I hope, I hope the videos are a blessing fewer and fewer are watching them, but I hope that means you're getting fed elsewhere or um, you're in the word yourself or something. But anyway, so Genesis uh, 22 and Hebrews 11. I want to read from Hebrews 11 first. I'll start reading at verse 17. A uh, wonderful passage here. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, whom he had received the promises of offering up his only begotten son, it was to him it was said, and as in Isaac your descendants shall be called. He considered that God is able to raise people even up from the dead, from which he also received him, Isaac, back as a type. And so we see here that the scripture calls Isaac a type. Um, so if you're uncomfortable with us looking at that subject, well, here's here in Hebrews 11, it's even called a type. And so just keep that in the back of your mind. Now, I want, to, I want you to picture with me, if you would, um, just briefly, uh, think back to when your child was born and you first laid eyes on that beautiful little girl or that handsome young man and the first time you held them in your arms and how excited you were uh, to have uh, these little ones in your home, in your family. Um, well, I remember, remember how it was for Angie and I. We prayed and prayed. Uh, that we would conceive. Um, we did, and uh, we prayed for the baby um, daily. Uh, prayed not only that uh, she would be healthy, although we did pray for her health, but we also prayed for her mind, that the Lord would make her sharp. We also prayed for her soul. Even while she was in the womb, we prayed her for her soul, that the Lord one day, when he spoke to her heart, that she would come running to the cross and give her life to him. And the Lord answered, has answered all those prayers. Well, imagine how exciting you were and think back about that um, that day. Now, now think about Isaac. Abraham and uh, Sarah had prayed and prayed and prayed for a little one to come. And yet when he came, um, they were up in age. They had received the promise of the Lord. Now it didn't go as smoothly as I'm making it sound because um, they wanted to help the Lord out after the promise didn't come. So they um, enlisted Hagar, um, Sarah's handmaid, and she conceived through Abraham, and they had a son named Ishmael. Uh, but God made it clear that he was not the promised son. He was not the one that God had promised, that this would come through Sarah. And so now they've conceived, they've had a son. And imagine the excitement for Abraham and Sarah as this little one has come into the world and changed their lives completely. He's the promised one. He's the one that God promised would carry on not only the name, but the seed, the family, and that the Lord would make a great nation through him. So imagine their excitement when he came. And then as he's being raised, as he's uh, coming up from a, a baby to a toddler, uh, they would see him and they'd say, boy, this is not just any child. This is, this is God's promised one. And so they were so excited and then he went from a toddler to an adolescent to, to then a teenager. And um, I'm sure they had problems with Isaac as a teenager, as we all have, as we all do. Uh, but then as um, he grew into a man, 
is where we come upon the scene here in Genesis 22. Um, some think that Isaac was even as old as 30 to 35 years old. Now, if that's the case, it could have been more of a type than we even know because Isaac could have could have died at 33, which would have been the age that Jesus was when he died. And that's what we're talking about tonight, how Isaac and the situation we see tonight will be a, a type or a picture of Jesus and the cross. And so I hope you see that. So I want to read with you now, if I could, Genesis 22. Uh, it says, Now it came about after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and he split wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, hmm, third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go over there, and we will worship and return to you. Hear what he said? We will worship and return to you. In other words, we will return to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his on Isaac, his son, and he placed in his hand the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked together. Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and he said, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. They came to the place of which God had told him, and Isaac built the altar there and arranged the wood and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, do not stretch out your hand against the lad and do nothing to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham raised his eyes and looked and behold behind him, a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide as it is to this day. Oh, in the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. Uh, we know that word is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. So what a wonderful passage we have in Genesis 22 and how Abraham uh, and Isaac uh, paint a picture of God the Father and God the Son uh, as we know it in the Gospels. And what a, I mean, it's just amazing at the, what we're seeing here and some of the similarities that we have. I just want to go over some bullet points of some of these similarities, and I hope, I hope you will see uh, how similar they are as well. Well, one, uh, Isaac and Jesus were called the only uh, or beloved or begotten sons of a righteous father. Um, we know that John three sixteen for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, speaking of Jesus. And so Isaac is called that as well, the only or the only begotten son of Abraham. Um, well, we could say, well, Abraham had Ishmael. How is he the only begotten son? Because he's the promised one. He's the one that God said would uh, the promise would come through. And Ishmael was a son, a son born out of sin. And um, we are the sons of God or the children of God. Those in the world are still in their sin. They are not the begotten sons of God because they're still in their sin. They haven't been redeemed um, by the grace of God. Also, number two, both Isaac and Jesus were identified as the son of of Abraham. 
Um, we see that uh, in the scripture. We read this last week, uh, but both um, both Jesus and Isaac were mentioned as sons of Abraham. Obviously, Isaac was the immediate son of Abraham, but Jesus was the son of Abraham in several ways. One, in genealogy, all Jews come through Abraham. Um, so that way, and spiritually, uh, Abraham is our father. We claim him as the father of, of our faith, as well as the Jews and even the Islam do, the Muslims do. Um, but Jesus was also the son of Abraham. And so, um, and then by Jewish birth, he is as well the sons of Abraham. So by his Jewish faith, um, we, and then through, um, through his faith in general, but also uh, through lineage he is. All right, the third way, they were both offered in sacrifice. Of course, we know, uh, we just read about Isaac being offered in a sacrifice, and we'll get more into details about that, but Jesus himself was also a, a, a sacrifice. Now, here's the interesting thing. It's a little backwards. With Isaac, God, God told um, through the angel, Abraham, to uh, stay his knife, not to not to kill um, Jesus, and a ram was provided. Uh, we see in the New Testament and the Gospels with Jesus that a lamb was provided, a sacrifice was provided, but in this case, it was the Lamb of God, meaning Jesus, and there wasn't God did not withhold his son as he did withhold Abraham's son, and thank God he didn't. See, Abraham had a son in natural birth named Isaac, but he was not sinless. So he didn't fit the bill to be our redeemer, Jesus Jesus did and does. Uh, so that's pretty neat. So the, then number four, the sacrifice was offered in the land of Moriah. Now, you may or may not know this, but the land of Moriah, or Mount Moriah as it's called, uh, is where this happened. Uh, this is real close to the threshing floor um, that David bought and where the Temple Mount was built. It's also really close uh, to Calvary or Golgotha. It's on the same mountain range. Some theologians think only miles apart. Some actually say it's in the same exact place. I don't know that we can prove that. Maybe we'll we'll be able to prove that when the Lord returns, but... Um, well, how neat that is, right there on the same mountain range at the at the least, and at the most, maybe even the same spot. Uh, but isn't that exciting that this would have happened relatively close to the same place? Remember, God said to go, and I will tell you which, which place to go to. And he told him, and it was the same mountain. All right, so number five, uh, both sons carried the wood for their sacrifice. We read in the text in Genesis 22 how that Abraham put the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac and he carried it up the mountain. What well, we see in the Gospels with Jesus um, that Jesus carried his own cross. Um, you can read that in John 19 if you would like. But Jesus carried his cross up to Mount Calvary or up to Golgotha um, and he was offered as a sacrifice there. Uh, they were both bound and placed on top of the wood. Uh, we just read that in Genesis 22. Um, and then um, Jesus obviously was bound and nailed to the cross in John 19. We see that. Um, Philippians 2.8 tells us he was willing to do that. Um, so um, and that's, the, that's the number six thing. Both were willingly to allow themselves to be offered in sacrifice. Now, Abraham would have been upwards of over 100 years old at this point. Isaac, if he was in his 30s, um, Abraham actually would have been a little older than that, I guess. But 30-year-olds could surely stop his dad from doing this, but you see that he doesn't. He willingly lays down and offers himself as a sacrifice uh, on the altar. Well, we see that also with Jesus, don't we? He was willing to go to the cross and die for you and I. I remember in the garden, um, he said, um, uh, Father, let this cup pass from me. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours. Praise God. He did God's will. And then both sons, listen to this, 
both sons were resurrected or given back to their fathers uh, on that third day. Remember, it says on the third day they went up. And so here we have uh, the passage in Hebrews 11 tells us that Abraham was so willing to do this, to kill his son Isaac, because he had such faith, such faith, that even if God did want Abraham to kill him, but that God would raise him back from the dead. Now, here's the thing. We're looking in Jesus' time as a resurrection, and we're already seeing a couple of resurrections. Jesus raised a few people from the dead. We go to Elijah's time. He raised somebody from the dead. So we've already seen resurrections happen in history. But in Abraham's time, not one. Not one. And so he had so much faith in God that God could do this. That's the reason, I think, why he was a friend of God, as the Bible calls Abraham. Um, but the Bible says that he, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness, or he was accounting to him. It's an accounting term. It was counted to him as righteousness, his faith in, in God. And we see that certainly in this passage. Um, Isaac was essentially dead because he was going to kill him. But yet God stopped uh, Abraham from doing that through uh, the angel. Can you imagine the grieving heart of Abraham? Loved this boy. And even though he, my, he, he had faith that God would bring him back, just to put your own son through pain and a sacrifice would have been horrendous. But yet he was willing to do it. God was willing to... Send a son. In fact, Isaiah uh, chapter 53 tells us that God was pleased to do it, pleased to see his son suffer because of for our redemption. Um, so I'm sure there's other ways, but those are just a few ways that Abraham, Abraham a type of God in a way, God the Father, uh, Isaac, a type of um, Jesus. I hope this has been a blessing to you. It has been to me. Uh, I love you. If you need me, you give me a holler. And um, that's, a, that's a country word, holler. I hope you know that. Um, and I can't wait till we all worship again. I say it every week, and I'm going to keep saying it until all of our church family is in, in church and worship together. I love you. God bless you. If you need me, call.